Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Community Development and Regulatory Services Committee for today, February 2nd. I apologize for the delay. Um, many people were at the Downtown Council's annual meeting. I have been joined by Council Members Pano, Quincy, Fry, and Reich, which is a quorum of the committee. Uh, we'll start our committee meeting today by moving the consent agenda, items four through 12. Are there any items four through, I'm sorry, four through 11? Are there any items on four through 11 that anyone would like pulled for discussion? Seeing none, I'll move to approve the consent agenda items four through 11. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those items are approved. Um, I'm just gonna use my prerogative to take up item number three first uh, to just give a little bit of time for the mayor to arrive for item number one and also because I, I think there's probably a few people here for number three that might not wanna sit through item number one. Uh, so is there a staff report on the Rose Street Patisserie? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, we have an application for a charter on sale wine and strong beer license class E by the Rose Street Patisserie at 2811 West 43rd Street, and that's in the Linden Hills neighborhood. Um, they will be operating as a full rest, full service restaurant and bakery. Um, they, the zoning department determined that they do have a parking requirement of 21 spaces, and that has been met with a sharing agreement with um, the St. Thomas Church, 2914 West 44th Street. Um, this restaurant will have an interior occupancy of 64 seats um, and no exterior um, dining option at this restaurant. Hours of operation are proposed to be from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, the sole owner is John Krause. Um, he also owns um, the Patisserie 44 at 4555 Grand Avenue South in Minneapolis. A public hearing is required for this um, application. Um, public hearing notices were sent to residents and property owners within 600 feet of this location. We also notified the Linden Hills Neighborhood Association and the Linden Hills Business Association. We received one response from that notification process and that response was in support of this application. Our review of the application finds that it meets all of our requirements and the staff's recommendation is to approve this application. Are there any questions for Mr. Wilson on item number three? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing on item number three, which is a license application for the Rose Street Patisserie. I know Mr. Kramer is here. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Welcome. Yes, I uh, oh, own Patisserie 46 and Rose Street Patisserie. Just looking forward to getting in the neighborhood. Thank you for your testimony. I have one other person signed up, Elizabeth Rose. Did Elizabeth want to speak? Okay, great. <laughs> Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and move approval. Are there further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, that item is approved. We'll then move on to item number one, which is the reappointment of the CPED director, and I'm not sure who's giving that report. Is there a report? I guess not. Okay, we'll open the public hearing then on item number one. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Please step forward, state your name and address for the record. You could line up actually, that make it go faster. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, my name is Steve Min. I'm with Loopy Development at 1701 Madison Street Northeast. Uh, my firm is currently doing two very important projects in the city with the city's help, Broadway Flats and Mill City Quarter. And as the chair knows, because of her deep involvement in both, as well as Council Member Fry, uh, these projects were very complicated and required a great deal of leadership from the CPED department, both staff level at planning and in terms of the finance. There were city parcels involved in the acquisition of both of these sites. I have to say, leadership at CPED has been uh, incredibly supportive of our projects. Mr. Taylor, in particular, uh, showed personal interest in both of these projects and has really assisted us uh, in making these projects successful. We've had a number of bumps in the road uh, where we've had uh, to work with staff, and I just want to compliment him on uh, the speed at which we were able to get certain complications of the development resolved. It's nice to have access to a uh, department head who is uh, personally involved in projects like this, and I have 
just from years of experience can tell you that uh, response levels have never been better at that department and I attribute that to Mr. Taylor's involvement and I appreciate the access I've had to his office and his involvement and interest in our projects and I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tennant, welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Melvin Tennant with Minneapolis, our Convention and Visitors Association. We've had a uh, nearly 30 year relationship with the city of Minneapolis and I'm here on behalf of uh, speaking for Mr. Taylor's reappointment as CPED director. I would just uh, simply say a couple of things both uh, from the standpoint of engagement and uh, being being very accessible. Those are two words that have come to mind with my uh, relationship with, uh, with the department and with Mr. Taylor. The one example I will give you specifically is the uh, major project that Meet Minneapolis and the hospitality community is embarking upon is our tourism master plan and he has offered a number of resources from himself and other members of his department to really look at tourism development as economic development. So I certainly appreciate that acknowledgement. Looking forward to uh, working with him and I would certainly endorse his reappointment. Thank you for your testimony. Ms. Cherry Holmes, welcome. Thank you, Jackie Cherry Holmes. Uh, resident of Minneapolis, 1216 Sheridan Avenue North. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, I'm pleased to speak today on behalf of Director Taylor. I find working with him to be an absolute pleasure. He has the ability, unlike a lot of other people, to rise to the mission of it and not get bogged down in the details and say, where do we want to go? What are we trying to accomplish? And then how can we help that get done? Uh, he's responsive, phone calls are returned, uh, level of responsiveness is, is really good and really he's really good to work with in that way. So I just want to say that I think that he's made uh, great strides and great outreach with the business community and is well respected in the community that I operate in, both from the community level, from the West Broadway Business Association to the business community in downtown Minneapolis. And it is a big feat to be well respected in both communities and able to function well in both communities. So I strongly support his uh, reappointment. Thank you for your testimony. Ms. Newman, welcome. Good afternoon, Nikki Newman with the City Attorney's Office. As one of the assistant city attorneys assigned to CPED, I've had the opportunity to work closely with Mr. Taylor over the past year and a half. I've been impressed with his focus on not only the mission of the department, but the means, um, his focus on transparency, inclusiveness, collaboration, the way he treats his colleagues with respect and empowers his staff to do their jobs. I have, um, and thus, he has created a very positive work environment at CPED, the result of which is a very positive, productive department, and I'm thus happy to support his reappointment. Thank you for your testimony. Ms. Black, welcome. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the committee. I come also to speak on behalf of uh, Craig Taylor and his leadership at CPED, the Northside Funders Group, that I represent a collaborative of 20 foundations. The city of Minneapolis, Hennepin County, and the state of Minnesota have always worked in partnership with CPED, but we found uh, Mr. Taylor's leadership to be particularly advantageous to our ability to lift North Minneapolis up, to lift up its assets, namely its people, and the land as economic opportunities, not just for North Minneapolis, but for the region. His leadership and ability to galvanize his team and partnering directly with residents and community stakeholders in North Minneapolis has also allowed us to accelerate um, opportunities for resources from our regional partners, such as Greater MSP, and national funders, such as Living Cities, to be able to greater address the needs um, in North Minneapolis and really leverage public sector innovation in our work. We support his reappointment. Thank you for your testimony. Mr. Belton, welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I'm here also um, to support the uh, reappointment of Craig Taylor as the CPED director. Uh, I've known Craig for, well, let's just say, um, he's known me more than 30 years, but I'm younger than he is. So um, I've known him a long time, and I have great respect for him, have worked with him uh, over the years. And one of the things that I like uh, best about working with him in this capacity is that he is accessible. When I became the interim president and CEO of the Minneapolis Urban League, the second phone call I received was from him. The first was from my wife, but the second was from Craig, and the first appointment I made uh, actually was with Craig. Uh, he not only came uh, to the Minneapolis Urban League, which speaks volumes uh, for him, the fact that he uh, doesn't see his role as being someone who sits in City Hall, but he came to my office and he brought members of his staff with him. And he asked me the question, how can we help and how can we partner together? It's his collaborative effort, his value of collaboration 
um, that we value uh, as well as his accessibility. Also, I would note his expertise. He's been in this business a very long time um, and is an expert, not only a locally known expert, and even a nationally known uh, expert in the field of development. Uh, we especially appreciate his commitment to workforce development, his understanding of workforce development as economic development, and his willingness to partnership, not only with the Urban League, but in the community and generally in promoting uh, that agenda. And finally, I would note that uh, he's a member of this community. He's not only a member of the Minneapolis community, he is an important and significant member of the African American community. And it is an important symbolic um, um, a victory for us to have him in this position. The optics of having Craig Taylor sit in that office and uh, be responsible for development for the city of Minneapolis is not lost on our community and is highly valued. So thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Is there anyone else here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Councilmember Quincy. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I, uh, too, am supportive of uh, the reappointment and uh, wanted to take a moment. Uh, we we're fortunate enough to have a number of uh, very influential and important people who have had the opportunity to work with Mr. Taylor. I'm very excited about the staff that exists in CPED and, and the work that they're doing. And uh, that, in, in, in no doubt, is in relationship to uh, is the team that uh, Mr. Taylor has assembled and maintained. Uh, I'd like to uh, move approval of the uh, reappointment of uh, Craig Taylor as uh, CPED director. Approval has been moved. Uh, I'll call on the mayor to speak. Mayor Hodges, thank you for being here today. Thank you so much, Madam Chair, and thank you for letting me speak in your committee. And I am here. Uh, to speak in favor of Mr. Taylor's reappointment. Uh, I, 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 the first time I did that was putting his name forward. Uh, the leadership that he has brought to CPED, the partnership uh, that he has brought throughout the community that he brought with him and then has extended in his time as CPED director are very valuable. His responsiveness uh, to people but also to the needs of the day and to the needs of the city and he has pulled a great leadership team together at CPED. Uh, he is shy about taking credit uh, for the success of the department and will defer uh, that credit to his staff um, which is completely appropriate and I will note that the successes of CPED also rest on the successes of its leadership and that he um, is in large measure responsible for some of the great successes we've seen uh, in his tenure here. Um, his focus on uh, growth for the city, uh, his focus on entrepreneurs, as well as for the you know as well as for established businesses, both large, medi uh, large, medium, and small, um, and his understanding that equity as part of that growth strategy is crucial and that the future of Minneapolis depends on everybody in, in Minneapolis uh, being able to participate um, is part of the vision that he brings and part of what he is bringing throughout the entirety of the department in ways that are bearing fruit now but will bear great fruit um, as time goes on. So it is a new day in Minneapolis. He is a new leader to meet that day. Um, he is doing great work and more to come uh, in his vision for the department and his work with us and I uh, ask you to support his renomination for and his reappointment for uh, CPED director. Thank you. Further comments or questions on Councilmember Quincy's motion to approve? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. We'll move on then to item number two. Mr. Winklehake, welcome. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, Council Members. In the RCA that you have before you, the City Council is being asked to adopt a resolution approving the TIF plan modifications to four TIF districts in the semi area of the city. These modifications would allow tax increment from these districts to be used for affordable housing projects located anywhere in the city. Uh, back in the mid to late 90s, as a little bit of a background, the city established five TIF districts in the semi area. Pay as you go notes were issued for a number of light industrial projects back then. Then in 2006, the TIF plans for semi-TIF districts phases one, two, three, and five uh, were modified to allow surplus increment that uh, was available to be accumulated and potentially used to pay for a portion of some of the public infrastructure costs that were envisioned out in the semi-area in support of a bioscience campus that was being planned. 
Uh, more specifically, the tax increment was going to be used for the construction of Granary Road through the middle of the area. Uh, over the last nine years, uh, tax increment has been accumulating from these four districts. However, the bioscience campus did not materialize as planned. And as of the end of 2015, the statutory authority of the city to expend these surplus TIF funds for infrastructure expired. Uh, so pursuant to the TIF statutes, uh, the city must now use these funds to first of all, uh, pay off any outstanding pay-as-you-go notes, and that will happen in late February or early March. Then the remaining funds must be either sent to Hennepin County for redistribution, or the city can authorize use of some of these funds for affordable housing, rental housing. Uh, any funds that get sent back to Hennepin County would be redistributed to the city, county, and school district, and the city would receive approximately 46% of that amount that's sent back. Uh, those redistributed funds would be considered general property taxes, and they could be used for any purpose that's approved by the city council. Uh, the use of uh, the TIF funds for affordable housing uh, would require that the TIF plans be modified to add authorizing language, and the TIF budget needs to be amended for each district to add a line for affordable housing. Uh, the attached TIF plan modifications that you have uh, that are attached to the report allow for the maximum amount of TIF funds from each district that can be used for affordable housing. Uh, the table on page two uh, lays out some of the amounts that we're dealing with. Uh, the amounts are broken out by each of the four districts and then a total on the right hand side. You can see from the first line that we currently will have $5.6 million in funds available after we pay off the TIF notes. Uh, we will have to return some of this money back to Hennepin County for redistribution and that's because um, districts two and three actually currently have more than can be used for affordable housing. So if, you, if we send back the million 329, the city will get about 46% of that, which is a little bit over $600,000. Uh, TIP districts phases two and three will be just certified later this year, and about $12.5 million in market value will be added to the tax base. Uh, TIF districts phase one and five will continue to collect increment for a number more years. All that money can be used for affordable housing. Uh, so between the funds that we have currently on hand and what we will collect over the next three to eight years, the TIF plans have been modified to allow an additional $6.6 .6 million for affordable housing. The numbers are broken out on the last line item by TIF district and those appear in the TIF plans. I would like to mention that these particular TIF plan modifications do not appropriate any money for affordable housing. Uh, instead, they give the city council the statutory authority to make these appropriations from these four TIF districts in the future to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And that would typically happen through the normal city budget process for 2017, 2018, and however long the city council decides to um, uh, appropriate this money. With that, Madam Chair, I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Winkle Hank on item number two? Seeing none, thank you for your report. We'll open up the public hearing on item number two, uh, which is a resolution modifying the semi area phase one, two, three, four, and five, or three, four, three, and five TIF plans. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Anyone? Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. I'll move approval of the staff recommendation. I'll note that this has been a source of funding for the Affordable Housing Trust Fund in the 2016 budget, uh, and this will simply set us up to be able to further draw on that money for the trust fund in the future. Uh, further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. Thank you, Mr. Winklehaig. We'll then move to our uh, final item, which is item number 12. Uh, Council Member Fry or Council Member Cano. Yes, someone probably needs to move the main motion and then it'll be amended. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll, I'll move the main motion. Okay. Uh, the main motion is in front of us, Council Member Cano. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. What I would like to do is speak on this item and then offer some friendly amendments to what is before us. Um, I wanted to first acknowledge that there's community members in the room who have been working on this green zones uh, policy and, um, and concept for, for a long time. And so folks in, in the room today are joining us from the um, Community Environmental Advisory uh, Commission of, of the city. We have folks from the Center for Earth, Energy, and Democracy, Land Stewardship Project, uh, folks from the Phillips neighborhood. I see somebody stepping in here from uh, MPERG and, uh, and Community Power. So I'm, I'm very um, honored to be a partner in this work with a, a lot of the community groups that have spent a lot of time on this, in addition to the city staff from the Sustainability Office. And um, Gail, Gail is here today, and then Kelly, who have been working with us on this effort. So um, as you know, this um, initiative has been codified and adopted by the City Council since uh, 2013 through both our Energy Pathway Study as well as our um, Climate Action Plan. And um, the way that we talk about this effort is about having community-based initiatives to transition underserved and environmentally impaired parts of our city into healthier, safer, and more economically viable neighborhoods. And I think it's really important for us to strongly position this as a racial equity initiative, which I know has been supported by Mayor Hodges. Um, and she put in funding for this effort last year, but unfortunately it was cut out in December. Uh, but it doesn't mean that the work can't continue. And I'm glad that um, I've been able to work with Council Member Jacob Fry, Council Member Kevin Reich, uh, and certainly the co-authors of this um, original resolution, which are Council Member Cam Gordon and Council Member Andrew Johnson. So uh, today, what I want to talk a little bit about in terms of um, for the public record is talking about the role of overburdened communities in this process and the importance of protecting that voice within this work group. And so if I can have my, my staff, Koya, please uh, pull, pull up a map here. Um, so one of the, the things that um, comprises an overburdened community is, is the impact of um, cumulative levels of, of pollution and um, other environmental uh, factors that have a negative impact in people's lives. And so the map before us today is, as you can see, the areas outlined by the black is a racially concentrated area of poverty as designated by the Met Council. And so these are the um, uh, most um, low income and most diverse areas of our city. And uh, these areas are clearly um, concentrated in two parts of our, um, of our city. Inside of these uh, areas, you will also see another level of concentration, which is um, levels of um, asthma hospitalizations, as well as lead poisoning. Um, the lead poisoning risk. And our city staff was able to put this map together to help illustrate some of the issues that we're trying to address through this Green Zones Policy and Task Force or Work Group Initiative. And so as you can see, we have already a few challenges lining up, stacking up one on top of another. And I want, I want to show the next map and try to kind of keep this one in your mind. Um, and this particular map shows uh, the um, number of um, young children living in these neighborhoods. And so as you can see here, um, uh, children of color under age five are heavily concentrated in these two um, geographies of our city. And so this effort is really important for the, the future of our, our city as our growing uh, children are um, being raised in neighborhoods that are experiencing a lot of environmental pollution and challenges. And so this effort to me signifies a lot as the mother of, of three children who are growing up in Phillips. Uh, it signifies a lot in terms of the racial equity initiatives we're trying to promote at the city level and as adopted by the full city council in March of 2014. And so with that, um, I want to talk a little bit about the role that these folks will have in uh, rolling out the hopeful uh, work group. Uh, you know, we can't call it official until the full city council has adopted and approved uh, the resolution. So before us, um, you have two handouts. One is um, a copy of the, the resolution language with, with three amendments that I will walk, um, walk us through. And then also we have the Green Zones Initiative handout from a partner organization in California who has been able to articulate this process as a partnership between 
community members who are impacted by these issues, government partners, as well as business partners. And so I really believe this is going to be a winning strategy to help us transition into a fossil-free future eventually down the road. I think it's going to help us meet many of our already adopted goals around um, reduction of green gas emissions and community health. A lot of the work that we know our um, current commissioner of health, Gretchen Musicant, was here not too long ago speaking on during her reappointment um, to continue to lead the department. So in the resolution that we have, the, I'm adding um, some language. Uh, the first one is uh, adding substandard before housing, just to acknowledge that we're talking, we're not talking about general housing, we're talking about um, very low quality housing conditions that negatively impact uh, people's health. And then we wanna be more specific and more proactive in talking about how the work group shall have broad representation reflecting geographic and cultural diversity. Uh, the language we had before was uh, a little passive, and so we want to be more firm in, in setting that tone and direction. And then the third change talks about um, the, the work group as um, a vehicle to review and gather the data uh, that will draft recommendations regarding a green zone priority areas designation criteria and eligibility, goals and metrics tracking progress within each designation, and strategies aimed at improving health and supporting economic development based on the results of the above data analysis. And that is language that is actually um, pulled from the three previous goals that we have here in, in our resolution. So with that, I would like to just, you know, take any questions or have a discussion, or if someone wants to speak on the on the resolution, please feel free. Um, so, uh, Councilmember Cano, I'm going to take those three as one amendment. Check, is that okay? Yes. Would you like to move that? Yes, I would like to move those amendments. Okay, so what's in front of us is the main motion followed by Councilmember Cano's amendments all in one package. Councilmember Fry. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm supportive of uh, these three amendments, and I'll wait uh, for that amendment to hopefully pass before I speak on the underlying motion. Okay, uh, further comments on the amendments? Seeing none, in, uh, all in favor of Council Meccano's amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Those are approved. Now on to the main motion in front of us. Council Member Fry. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I had the opportunity uh, this last fall to take a trip out to Seattle, and one of the, they've been doing a whole lot of studying on the, the outcomes uh, in an individual's life based on the zip code in which they grow up. And those outcomes are uh, really dire in some circumstances. You can literally predict an individual's likelihood of having a heart attack by the time they're age 60, uh, having asthma, the likelihood of them having success in employment by the zip code uh, where they lived when they were a kid. Uh, you know, that that's shocking. Uh, it, it shouldn't be the case. Uh, and this Green Zones initiative will hopefully begin the process of uh, mitigating some of those really detrimental uh, factors to an individual's life. Um, so I'm... Um, you know, I, this this focuses on so many things, from socioeconomic segregation uh, to the overlay of of the factors of poverty plus pollution uh, to low unemployment to low employment. Um, and uh, I'm I'm really excited that this green zones initiative is moving forward. And I think the the status in which it's presently in is a very productive and effective one. Uh, this allows us to gather data. Uh, have real statistical analysis that shows us exactly where these problems are uh, taking place in our city and exactly how we can handle them. So we can really take these segments out with a scalpel and, and do everything possible to improve the lives of the individuals living within these areas. Further comments or questions? Councilmember Reich. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I'll uh, echo the uh, sentiments of Councilmember Cano in terms of the importance of this work and how partnerships moving forward will be a key part of uh, the success of this, I believe. And I also want to echo uh, Councilmember uh, Fry's comments about having data to really zero in on a multitude of issues so we can have actual successes to build on more successes to build on more successes. I think uh, when you have a, a multi-layered problem, uh, focus, data-driven, and intentionality are all the more important when the challenges are that great and per pervasive. So I'm appreciative of all the work that's going into it. And I'm also appreciative of the fact that so many people are taking this this seriously and have been this involved to get to this point. So uh, I happily support what's before us today. Further comments or questions? Councilmember Cano? 
Thank you, Madam Chair. And I will just say that um, I'm really looking forward to working on this effort with many of you going forward. I think this is going to be a really um, significant initiative for our city that will put us as a leader on the national front and issues of environmental justice. And um, I hope that we can count on the community support to continue to um, move this um, uh, project forward in a good way, in the way that it was intended to be, in a way that it should meet its goals and metrics based on the community's interest on how they want to see their lives improve, how they want to see the reduction of pollution in their neighborhoods. So I just want to say that your voice is really important in this process and we're going to need your help. And this work group that um, we're putting together, this task force, um, it's really going to require a lot of um, time and attention from our community members. And I hope to be able to work with many of you to find resources to help you continue to participate in, in that space and continue to bring your voice, voice forward to help us ensure that this effort um, has all the positive benefits that we know it can have. Okay, I uh, just want to take an opportunity to thank Kel Kelly and Gail for all the work that they've done. Um, this is something that's been on their work plan and in their hopper for a long, long time. So it is a, a testament to both of you uh, for doing this work and getting it to the point that we're at today. I also just thank want to take an opportunity to thank Councilmember Gordon, uh, the, um, you know, the, the ultimate person who can bring people together on issues like this and to really kind of hear what everyone is saying and try to bring forward some sort of consensus that everyone can live with. Um, you had served on this committee for many, many years, and although you don't, I'm just thrilled you're here today and wanna to thank you for all of your work on this as well. On the motion to approve item number 12 as amended, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, that item is approved. Seeing no further business before us, we are adjourned. <laughs>